Most of us use computers these days. We use computers for everything, from banking and investing to shopping and communicating with others through email or chat programs. Even though you may not consider your communications top secret, you probably do not want strangers reading your email, examining personal information stored on your computer, or using your computer to attack other systems or send forged email. With more and more computer-based electronic gadgets, people find it increasingly difficult to live their lives without computers. At times, the virtual world seems to dwarf the real world. Is there a sheriff in this virtual world? The other day, I interviewed Larry Greenblatt, lead instructor for Internet Work Defense and Information Security Training in a consulting company. Let's roll the tape. Hey Larry, good to see you again. Good to see you again. Sir. Now, last time when you appeared on my interview, you paint a grim picture the, about internet and the, the, the cyber war between U.S. and China. And you told me that China is uh, uh, having upper hands. Now, it, a few months passed, you still hold that thought? Well, I want to be careful. I, I seem to recall saying that, as far as I can tell, okay. my guess. So right. I don't. Uh, but it does appear that uh, yes, that. I would still stick with that. That um, uh, we still have the the biggest challenge here in the United States. I think is our workforce. It's hard to get our kids interested. They have a great pool of uh, of young people who are interested in the technologies. No, after after my uh, interview last time, the two things happened to me. One is I watched the movie uh, Die Hard. You know, played by uh, Bruce uh, Willis. Uh, Willis. And in that uh, the film, the bad guy is a hacker. You know, he 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 did exactly the same thing you told me during the interview. Say he just demonstrated to, to the to the defense department he can hack into a nuclear power station and control uh, their equipment. And uh, uh, it, of course, the DoD is just think him he, he's as a bandit and exp uh, expelled him. And the other thing I did is I interviewed Congressman Wolf, and because he made it public back in August 2008, he said his uh, computer and uh, the computer in his office was hacked by someone from China. It's FBI it did some investigation, and uh, the computer uh, hacked by Chinese uh, government is not only uh, limited into his office, but some very important committees are also uh, infected. Now, now I realize that after interview you, and, and, uh, and now I realize the threat is serious and the threat is real. Um, still, from time to time, it's difficult for me to realize that the U.S. is, is losing this cyber war as far as you can tell, because I always think the U.S. is always on the front line of the technical uh, uh, innovation. Is, is it not? Um, I'm personally of the mind that I think that a lot of these uh, geographic boundaries that define what is a country are dissolving. So um, while I may say the U.S. is, is, is having a hard time mm -hmm. uh, by compared to China, the international community uh, I think is actually growing. So um, we have, uh, for example, these hacker conventions uh, in Las Vegas, DEF CON. People come from all over the world. Yeah. And they may be the best hackers in the world. So I don't know that, uh, again, I don't like to pit one country versus another. I, I, it's more like the past versus the future. And I think the future is, is going to be uh, more internationally represented. And we're going to see the dissolving of these boundaries. Will they go down easy? Or are these, these uh, whether it's U.S. or China, try to hold on to their power uh, and, and make it a big fight? And I think we're likely to see some type of conflict uh, before this dissolves and, and then this international community takes over. Well, of course, if, if the international community can take over, that's a good thing. But still, uh, my impression is that I interviewed some other people that hacker these days, uh, many of them are organized. Oh, uh, quite. And yes. it's backed it, by government. Yeah, it, it, it used to be a, a basic rule that hackers were, were kids living in their, their mom's basement that yeah. liked to play with computers yeah. and, and do this stuff. But more and more over the last five years or so, it's, it's pretty accepted that it's either state or, or mafia sponsored and, and very well financed. So mm -hmm. these are not kids anymore. These are well organized groups. Um, but still, I'm ultimately uh, optimistic that, that uh, evolution just has not brought us three and a half billion years to, <laughs> to just fall apart because of some evil hacker. Sure. Now, the other thing, uh, when, when I interviewed the Congress more, I asked him the question that uh, the FBI investigate and uh, know that uh, his computer, his staff's computer, were hacked by Chinese government agents back in 2006. Still, uh, they feel hesitated to make it public. 
uh, you, you've been teaching a lot of government officials. Can, can, you, can you speculate the reason why they hesitate to make it public? Uh, again, it's, it, it's really hard for me to say. I wonder if they're making some things too public. But I'll tell you, along those lines, and even uh, what surprised me, it's not only government that are feeling this. I've spoken to a uh, Fortune 100 uh, um, company uh, um, security officers that have told me that, uh, candidly, so I don't want to say any company names, but mm -hmm. these are large companies <clears throat> that 70% of the traffic that they see hit the outside of their firewall has an, a source address of somewhere in China. 70%? 70% of a, a, a private company mm -hmm. is, is finding that their, their traffic is coming, at least attempting to penetrate. Now, all they can say, this is what we could see we blocked. Can they tell us what got through? <laughs> Probably. So, so, so you are saying that some got through. And, I'm, and, and I'm quite, guessing quite that it wouldn't surprise China. me that if 70% of the traffic is hitting it, something may have gotten through. And, and nobody wants to, like in any crime, uh, my mother's house has been burgled. She doesn't want to call the police. She doesn't want to tell anybody. So most people don't like to report. Uh, it's a damage to the reputation when they've been a victim of a crime. Mm -hmm. So that goes from an individual to the largest corporation. Any bank that gets penetrated and has money stolen, if they don't have to report it, they're not likely to report it. So mm. because it's a damage to the reputation. I see. So you think that's the damage of the reputation. That's the major reason they do not report sure. it.